Um, but let's go ahead and start off with some wins. Tell me what is good, um, what is happening. We celebrate wins, whether you feel like it's small or feel like it's a big win, we, we want to celebrate them. You don't know who else needs to hear it today. So would love for you to unmute and tell us what's what's good. Yeah, we just landed a big remodel project we thought we had lost. Hey. So, uh, we've booked about $200,000 in the last two weeks. Woo! That is huge, <laughs> Michael. How did you, did you guys just with some follow-ups, you were able to get that yes from them? That was just a situation where um, the guy who was in charge of the project was in a new job, new position with the organization. And he was waiting on the board to approve the thing and he wasn't communicating with us. And the time frame that he had said it would be approved had long passed, so we just thought it was gone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he texted me and said, uh, hey, we got the approval. When can we go? I love it. I love it. That's why it's so important to stay in touch with these people. You never know when something's dead or not, but staying in front of that customer database, doing those follow-ups. So, Michael, congratulations. That's a lot of sales in the past two weeks. So, Thank thrilled you. to see it. What other wins are we having? I know it's nerve wracking, guys. I know it's, it's tough. No I just signed trying. a new contract with Redmond Growth. I guess that's, that's a win. <laughs> hey, 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 we love that. I did see that this morning, Michael, and thrilled, excited to do some marketing with you. Gordon, I saw you unmute. I, I did the same thing. So we're going to uh, uh, key in today to see how uh, other folks were liking the, the system. Awesome. Well, Gordon, we're excited to have you, excited to have you here and, and have you be a part of it. Anybody else, what wins are going on? Um, I'm new to the group, but uh, my name is Josh Adams. We own uh, just a small general contracting company, and uh, I mean, I just it's just started working with Travis, but we just broke hundred thousand for gross revenue for the year. So I feel like that's a pretty big win for us, first year in business. So yes, Great Josh, job, that's Josh. huge. Yes, that's a huge win. As you can see, I'm not in the office like most everybody else, which we'll get there one day. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, you you see a lot of smiling faces because a lot of these guys are like, yeah, I'm normally in a van, you know, or like, hey, I've been where you're at. So you're you're not alone, dude. Not alone at all. <laughs> or, or I'll, be on a, I'll be on a job site here in about an hour. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or we paid our dues for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Par for the course. <laughs> what other wins do we have going on here this week guys or this month we just wrapped up the month of may and so if we have some numbers maybe some revenue numbers i'll jump in here nicole Derek, uh, yes Derek with dump at dumpster rental in little rock arkansas um, we've had a slew of weeks with bad news um, we have out of three trucks that we have uh, one of them being brand new uh, only one has been working. Uh, the brand new one went right into the shop with a massive transmission <sighs> leak. Uh, the other one had a part that was on national back order. So it's been a super stressful time for us. Uh, on top of that, both of my personal vehicles were in the shop. Um, but uh, I got one out of the shop. Uh, the parts are in for two of the other trucks. And then the brand new truck should be out to either today or tomorrow. Uh, so that's uh feel like we're making our way out of the uh, out of the clouds here. Um, on top of that, we just ordered um, 20 um, brand new dumpsters, brand new sizes for us, 30 and 40 yard containers. <laughs> and uh, we already have uh, like 10 to 12 of those rented out um, on the front end. So uh, really excited. Um, we only ordered two 40 yarders thinking that they wouldn't be as popular as the thirties, but we've actually had more requests for 40 yarders. So we kind of know the direction that we need to grow. 
uh, and increase that inventory in the coming months. Ah, Derek, businesses, you know, it's a roller coaster <laughs> of, of, of wins and downs and all of the things, but that is so exciting. And one question that we get asked constantly at Redmond Growth is, Nicole, when, when do I hire? You know, when is that next step? Like, when do I hire? When do I make this investment? And I feel like Derek just had a really good <laughs> uh, testimonial to that is he, before he ordered his dumpsters, they were rented. He knew if I make this investment, I'm going to be able to make my money back pretty quickly. And that's kind of the same rule of thumb that we have when you're looking to hire somebody is, you know, do I have so, am I losing work because I don't have the person? If the answer is yes, I'm consistently losing work, time to make that investment, get that person in there, get the piece of equipment. Let's take advantage of those leads coming in. So appreciate you sharing, Derek. And we're fingers crossed that no more trucks go into the shop in the foreseeable future. <laughs> Any other wins happening here today? Yeah, I said quantum contracting. Uh, we just got a lead from a uh, condo association that we've been working with they sent us uh over to another one to look at 60 decks so if we can pull that off it'll be about 1.2 to 1.5 million <laughs> hey. Rev. oh that'll be huge yes right. well definitely keep us posted on that and that would oh, yeah. probably be an indicator of hey if we do land that and all our guys maybe it is time to look at some hiring so absolutely yeah. fingers crossed keep me posted very excited to hear it guys well one of my clients i wanted to, to brag on here to kind of round out our wins is garden diva they are a custom metal art shop so one of our oddball clients i would say not many of <laughs> custom metal shops that we work with but they had their highest revenue month this past month in may um They've also paid down a butt ton of debt that, that they have been sitting on. And so just really excited to see them getting into that debt free mode and also hitting new revenue highs. So just wanted to brag on them. Um, any other wins before we move on? Going once, going twice. All right, guys. Let's get in, let's get into the meat of this meeting here. What issues are we running into, guys? What's weighing heavy on you? What's your biggest limiting factor? What questions do you have? You know, I'm sure there's somebody here who is where you are at or has been where you are at. This is the most powerful hour of the week because you have so many minds here ready to help. So just any questions, I would love for somebody to just unmute or you can raise your hand and we'll call on you, whatever you want to do. But Let's get it going. Yes, Zach, go ahead. Unmute, tell us. Um, so we've been running into the issue, um, I'm sure everybody has too, where work it just says, you're too expensive. You're too expensive. You're too expensive. I mean, we And we have overhead. We have an office. We have trucks. We have workers' comp. We have general, we're doing everything. We're a fence company. So anybody and their brother can just get in a truck with a shovel and post hole diggers and put up a fence all these landscape guys who don't know what they're doing jumping into the industry and and trying to do it um and we just get oh you guys you know constantly you guys are a thousand dollars over twelve hundred dollars over five hundred dollars over um and we just can't we can't seem to we you know there's there's certain clientele that that wants a fence contractor they know what they're getting when they when they when they get us but it's all the other stuff the all the other clientele that i know not everybody's your client but crap man it's it's getting to where you know our our closing rate is so low because people go oh you're too expensive we're, we're the first ones on it we send out a bid within 24 hours they have a bid they have their bid in hand then they wait a week two weeks for other bids to come in 
And then they wait another two weeks and they go, oh, you guys were more expensive. Even though you guys were on top of your stuff, you guys, you know, pay people to, to answer the phones and all that. We're doing everything we're supposed to do, but we're always too expensive. So I just don't know how to, other than saying, okay, next, I don't know what to do. So it's very frustrating when you do 1.4 million to two point, like I think last year we did $2 million in estimates and we didn't do 2 million. We didn't even do 50% of that last mm -hmm. year. You know what I mean? So it's, and it's even worse this year. We offer yeah. finance and we offer all that. And so anybody have any ideas on how we can, uh, short of slapping people's tires, you know, that, uh, <laughs> what we can do. Hey, Zach, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Where are you and where are you getting your leads? So we're out of the Central Florida area, um, close to Orlando. Uh, we get our leads. A lot of our leads come from Google organically. Um, Facebook, word of mouth, um, Angie, um, Yelp, uh, BBB, and then Redmond, we're doing the uh, Facebook ads. We just launched those, I think, this week. We're going to start launching them, um, doing Facebook and Instagram ads with them. So hopefully that'll bring more. But that's where we get them from now. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not going to harp on sales is about sorting, Zach, because I think some of the things that you've already said, it's like, yeah, I've accepted that. I know sales is about sorting. I'm not going to win every job. You know, I'm going to spend my time on the people. But Nicole, when like nine out of 10, I can't sort nine out of 10. Like, come on now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to harp too much on that. It sounds like you're doing all of the marketing moves to get leads coming in. It sounds like a lot of the leads that you're getting are free, which is great. We love organic leads, repeat customers, referrals, all of that. One thing that I know my clients probably are sick of hearing me say <laughs> is without value, the only thing that people worry about is price. Yeah. Um, I mean, how, how can you, how can you show more value? You know, like I, we we don't use subcontractors. It's we're all employ all our guys are employees. We have a guarantee. We we know what we're doing. We have videos. We have all this stuff. Like yeah. how else can we show? We have. Are you the one Zach who's doing the estimates, or do you have a somebody else who's helping with estimates or a sales team? I do. I do most of the estimates, oh, or my partner does. Yeah, we hired a sales guy. He he just yeah cost us a whole bunch of money. Yeah, yeah, and that was kind of where I was going here is I was like, if you if there is somebody else doing the estimates, it might be time to to take it back over or to, you know, hold them accountable, make sure that we are doing all the steps, you know, that we're going over the one sheet, that we're sending email and text message reminders that have links to Google reviews and video testimonials if we have them, you know, that we're ready to give multiple options, you know, kind of a good, better, best. So it's a pick one compared to a yes or a no, that we're setting a follow-up appointment. And if we're doing all of those things, there's, there's really not much else you can do. You know, you're already offering financing. But we got sure that from that very first phone call, we have a section in our script where we're going over, hey, and I know that you're probably going to get a couple other quotes. We even encourage that. Here's what you can expect from us. That's a little bit different. And from that very first phone call, we're already seeding that value into their mind. Um, mm -hmm. And we're just touching that multiple times. Um, if you're doing that, if you're giving multiple options, if you're setting follow-ups, we're sending email confirmations and texts with links to our reviews and testimonials. What else can you do? Right. At that point, it becomes a numbers game. And and we do all that except for, you know, most of the time we can't offer options because of HOAs. So when mm. we can offer options, you know, then we offer them, you know, but if it's they, they can only get tan vinyl six foot high or they can only get this, obviously we can't do. But we send like for wood, okay, do you want board on board? Yeah. Uh, stockade staining horizontal you know what i mean so mm -hmm. we do offer we do that so in florida is a it, i don't know if anyone else here is from florida but it's a whole different beast it's it, they're cheap 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 people here so um it could just be that it could just be everybody wants price they don't care about and it's fence they don't care about value they just want to put fence up. Right. they know a hurricane's coming it'll well, knock down what I'll say, Zach, and I know that you probably have a million and five different of these stories, but I, I 
got a fence a couple around this time last year, a storm came through and I'm already having to replace pickets on it because they did a crappy job, you know? And so like, I wish that I would have maybe spent a little bit more to, for higher quality, you know, <laughs> and now I'm having to drop another couple grand to fix something that I just purchased, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have a million and five of those testimonials. If you can have somebody verbally give a testimonial like that, be super powerful to provide. Okay, I can try that. But, we we have yeah. we have Mike and call. So yeah, yep. The reviews are awesome, guys. But having a actual video testimonial is always going to seem more provable. You know, it's 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 a little bit harder to fake that, and so people are going to buy in. And I would even in your sales process say, hey, I just sent you this link to this video. Could you watch that before our sales appointment? You know, before I come out, just so you have an idea of what to expect when working with us. You know, like kind somebody of a Somebody who went cheaper and then, or just a review, video review testimonial. I would general. get as many video testimonials as you can, but especially from somebody who has a story like that, you know, where they had a negative experience and then with you, they had a very positive one. Those are very powerful testimonials. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. if I could pipe in, um, the first thing you have to do, I think, Zach, is set yourself apart from all those guys that are throwing out the cheap prices. Uh, our value proposition is that we're trustworthy and uh, our our Google reviews support that. So I always ask people to read our Google reviews. Um, we do a lot of roofing and I don't know how this translates to fencing, but uh, if you read our Google reviews, you're gonna see multiple reviews that say, uh, I had three companies give me a bid, two of them told me I needed a whole new roof artisan quality construction came out and said hey we can do a repair for you your roof's going to last you three to five more years uh the repair will cost you six hundred dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever and uh, uh the other companies just throw a full roof replacement at, at them every single time mm -hmm. and that, that's a big thing with contracting everybody who hires a contractor is worried about whether they can trust them or not so right. if you can build that trust, trust proposition that'll put you head and shoulders above the rest of them that's great advice, Michael. And one thing that got put in the chat that Ryan put is, is it possible for you to market to higher end neighborhoods rather than HOAs? And this is a great point. And I'm a little bit butthurt, Ryan, that I didn't think of this before you did. Um, because that is a great point. And with your Facebook ads, the beautiful thing with Facebook ads is we can get super targeted. We can get super targeted on what neighborhoods those ads are showing up in, what their average household income is, male or female. Like Facebook ads can get so targeted so that we have a better chance of getting in front of your ideal likely buyers. Also doing Dream 100 work where you are building relationships with people who are going to either subcontract you out hire you directly but it's gonna you're able to kind of target your ideal buyer mm -hmm. you know whether it's high-end real estate agents who you know might be referring contractors when they go to sell a home you know or when the buyers go to buy um but i think that's great advice if you're in a market where you're like hey we have a lot of kind of like core areas around here then people who just are always going to choose the <laughs> cheapest let's get out of there let's get ourselves in front of those ideal likely buyers Mm -hmm. Another value it. add that uh, that I just thought of, uh, we, we work with a commercial contractor and they always schedule a one year post construction completion walkthrough with their customer. Um, so if that's something, you know, depending on the job, it may not need to be one year, maybe it's six months or something like that. But on the front end, if you can mention that and schedule it with them when construction is completed, they have that peace of mind is, hey, this guy has accountability. He's going to come back, check and make sure everything is looking and working the way it should um, and, and make sure that quality control is there and the longevity of the job. Now, Derek, you mean like if we do that as a company, not get with contractors to like do punch work for them, right? Correct. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we do that. We, we do oh, a okay. Month, yeah, we do a six month follow up to where my partner goes out, make sure the gate's not sagging, all that kind of stuff. And if any pickets need to be replaced, we, he brings pickets out. We replace them. Um, yeah, so we do. We do a follow up on that. 
Awesome. That wins us a lot. That wins us a lot of stuff. And then whenever we do that, we tend to get a couple more jobs within that neighborhood. Because yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Out. So, yeah. And I'm seeing head nods to that, Zach, where it's like, if you are in a neighborhood, let's make sure that we're doing that we're doing some door knocking. We're oh. offering free estimates. We're leaving them our one sheets, you know. Yeah, door hangers, that. all that. Yep. Yeah. And I even, I have a couple of clients that instead of doing like just your regular yard signs that look cheap and are easy <clears throat> to ignore, I have some clients that have these like really nice wood ones that they hang theirs off of. So it looks it's just more noticeable. It's going to stand out. But if you have a client who's willing to let you put that in their yard, you know, maybe you say, Hey, for a hundred dollars off, you know, could I, could we put this in your yard for the next month and then we'll come pick it up. That's great free advertising in a, in your ideal market, you know, hitting it from multiple angles. And always ask for a review after you do that six month walkthrough and fix the problems. I mean, yeah. We, you're, you're going to get a good review out of that problem. Yeah. We put, QR codes on the back of all our clipboards. Beautiful. They can just take a picture of or however you scan it and then they can do it right from there. So our that. installers have it and our and myself and my partner have it. So love it. Last thing I'd say is dump Angie. That's a race to the bottom on price. I know, I know. But it's it, there there are leads that come in and every once in a while you get the diamond in the rough. So right. Well right. we landed a hundred thousand dollar job off of Angie. So yeah. Hopefully with the Facebook ads, you know, um, there's only five different ways to market a company. There's a very limited amount of good ways. And part of it is just keeping track of what is being the most fruitful and what isn't. And so hopefully with these Facebook ads, they become more cost effective and we can get rid of Angie's, you know? Yeah, that'd be nice. So yeah, that's the that's the goal. Brandon, I saw you had your hand up and I saw, uh, I think Laura, you had your hand up for a little bit there. And so if, if either of you have a question, I'd love for you to unmute. You, you already covered it, Nicole. I was I was saying what we did to make it easier to send out the bids that we needed and not worry about the ones that fell off is we went and talked to some people in a Dream 100 type scenario, started subcontracting for some other people, and we made a similar amount of money. But the nice thing was is we're because we drive wrap vehicles, we're always advertising in the neighborhood whether we've worked there before or not, mm -hmm. and someone else that doesn't have the labor and labor seems to be what controls the market at the moment and so you have if you have any other that labor to expand your marketing um, when they see you they're always more likely to sign that estimate too so that was the only thing yeah. I wanted to add to that love that brandon and that's a good point if you guys are looking to get new vehicle wraps that is something that we can design for you um or at least talk to your coach about it even if you have somebody that you want to use internally um because having a vehicle wrap is great if you have the money set aside to do it um because it will usually pay off as long as it is a vehicle wrap that stands out if you are a plumber and you have a white van with blue text, I promise you, you are not standing out. And so talk to your coach about it. We can run you through some ideas and we can even create renderings for you. Michael, I see your hand up. Yeah, I didn't know you guys did that. What does the use fee usually run for a design? So if you're a part of, if you're includes marketing, then it's included in your fee, any graphic design work. Now you would have to, you know, find a someplace local that's going to, you know, actually do the yeah. vehicle wrap. We don't have Travis out there wrapping vehicles in, in between meetings. <laughs> but we, if you're part of a marketing package, then it's included. Oh, okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Laura, I saw your hand up towards the beginning of the call. I don't know if you're, if you're still in here or if you still have a question. Good morning. So Good they covered morning. a little bit of it, but uh, what I'm curious about is for the service and repair based contractors, how are you handling customers that call, particularly from a Google lead? So now you've paid to have them inquire into your business. And if you have a demographic of clients who are, um, I don't want to be ageist, but senior or not tech savvy. So how I've been approaching it is, hey, we'll give you a free estimate, but you got to text me pictures of your electrical panel or the area you want your hot tub put in. And based off the information you provide me, I'll email you a proposal. So what we're getting is there's clients who they don't want to do that. And I think what they're doing is they're just calling somebody else. So I'm wondering if you all have a process of how you 
uh, sell to that type of client or uh, suggestions on ways to serve clients who aren't tech savvy and still want a service but without having to go out and provide something for free? I would love if a client wants to chime in about their experience uh, no longer emailing estimates or maybe I think yeah, we have some we, clients. We do a little bit of that. The nice thing about those clients is that everyone else thinks just like the rest of us and wants to send everything via email. So automatically 80% of the contractors don't want to service that client anymore because it costs something to go see them. So I've just dedicated myself to being the one who delivers those handful of estimates and our closing rate on that has been higher than anything else and it's because everyone else is trying to run them through the same funnel that works really awesome for us but does exclude some clients so I just decided that out of the out of our company I was going to be the one that just ran those sales calls and spent the time closing them myself and that's worthwhile time, Brandon? It's worth it's worked out because we, we offer yes. we're handyman service, but we offer remodeling as well. And a lot of those clients can no longer do the small projects, much less the larger projects. And so we it's always started out with something small, but that's how that client likes to buy. They want to come try you out, earn you have to earn their trust kind of an old school way of thinking that way they're not going to buy it from a picture or a testimonial or a video they don't care about that they want someone who has showed up to do work for them before and that's getting to be a larger and larger portion of the market too that is being ignored and so it's something that we can't address in mass marketing but it is a large portion of the market that no one else is addressing with mass marketing too so that's the conclusion I've come to, it's been worthwhile to go out and yes. do that, but it is it does interrupt the rest of your flow. So you have to have someone who's handling your other call intake for that yeah. to work. There's a happy medium. There's a happy medium. I never want a client spending a bunch of time running out to jobs. They're never going to win. You know, they're just not good fits. There's somebody who's just price shopping. I don't want that. But I ne also never really want a client to just be emailing estimates or trying to quote things over the phone. It robs you of any opportunity to sell. And so the way that we find the happy medium is in that first initial phone call, we're going to have some vetting out questions. So we're going to ask them, have you spent any time getting quotes? How urgent is this, you know, job? How, how soon are you looking to get this completed by? Um, you know, these questions are going to allow you to gauge kind of how serious that they are. Okay, awesome. For referral, it sounds like you might be needing a full electrical, you know, panel change out, whatever. I don't know that lingo, guys. Um, whatever it is that they're needing, electrician wise, um, you know, typically we see, you know, I'm not going to be able to quote you exact unless we came out and did it, but typically we see those running in between three grand and six grand. Is that realistic? Is that something that you're, you know, is that kind of what you had in mind? Do you have financing? You know, we also offer financing if that's an option, if that needs to be an option. And so you're kind of getting that gauge on the phone. Is this somebody who's just trying to get a price over the phone? If they are, they're probably not our best fit. It's probably going to be a waste of time for us to go out there. But if they have the right answers to these questions, if they seem like they want to move forward, okay, awesome. We can definitely help you with that. So what we do is we're going to set you up for a sales appointment where we send out a licensed and trained technician to give you a detailed and accurate estimate along with all of your options. They'll be able to walk you through financing, you know, good, better, best. You'll know exactly what needs to go, what needs to happen in order to solve that issue. If you decide to move forward with us, that $80 fee to get that technician out there and to give you that estimate is going to be waived. If not, we'll collect that $80 at the end and you'll at least know all of your options and what is required to move forward. I can get you on the schedule for Tuesday at 9 or Thursday at 2, which works best for you. And so that would be the process that I would recommend. Now, if I have a client who's trying to book everything and anything, then I'm probably not going to have them charge a trip fee. But if I have a client who has quite a bit of work and dealing with a lot of tire kickers, they're not trying to book everybody, I am always going to recommend that they do some type of trip fee or estimate fee. 
And thank you for that. That that's very helpful. So, and I appreciate we're spread across the the states here. But does anybody have an average of what you would charge or what seems reasonable to charge for um, an estimate site visit? Like we're talking about, two, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I'm saying, well, we're going to charge a one-hour service call, and heck, maybe we can fix something while we're there. I don't know, you know, 200 bucks to come out for an hour of our time. Um, Dale, I don't know if you're still on this call. I know that trip fees is something that you were a little bit reluctant to do, but now you do them and you love them. Could you, if you are in the call, could you put in the chat what you charge for yours? He's a plumber in Oklahoma City. Um, and Laura, I wouldn't go over what you guys charge per hour unless you have somebody who's really pushing to figure out price. Like our default the answer just went through. The one about get, coming out, giving an ask, accurate estimate. This is our estimate fee or trip fee, whatever you want to call it. Like that's kind of our default answer for somebody pushing for price. We almost want to make it standard that we don't give estimates over the phone. If somebody is still, after you've ran through that once or twice and they're still like, can't you just give me a brand time when I found? That's when I would say, okay, well, just to give you an idea, you know, a job like that typically can run in between blank and blank range. Um, our hourly rate is blank per, you know, hour. Does that sound, you know, and it's probably going to be in between blank and blank. But again, I can't give you an estimate over the phone. It's not going to serve you or me. You know, I would really try to not have those conversations if we can avoid them. Um, Dale just commented, he, they do a $89 for an estimate, um, but we do refund the money if they book the job with us. And he's in Oklahoma City, which I promise you, Oklahoma is a lot cheaper than California, especially where you're at. So you could probably get away with charging 120 or above. I mean, I have some clients that are close to 200, you know, for a for a estimate fee. Um, so I think you could definitely get away with being over 100 for sure. Thank you. That's very helpful. You mind me chiming in on that one? Yes, Ryan. So, I mean, this, Laura, this is from a couple of years ago. But we're in the East Bay, Walnut Creek, Danville area. Uh, guys were charging 149 to come out. And then same thing, sir, adding that or deducting that from the price. So that was a couple of years ago. So, yeah, somewhere between there and 200, I'm sure would probably be about right, depending on where you're at. I mean, if you're in San Francisco proper, who knows? Yeah, and I see Jeremiah just commented. I know, Ryan, you're a remodeler, as you guys can see by his hat, Remodel Pro. Jeremiah, you're a remodeler. They're charging close to 250 for an estimate. And for remodelers, it's always going to be high. Like if a remodeler is charging 100, I'm, you know, it just takes more time to draw up those estimates, especially if you're getting detailed, doing any type of rendering, you know, or, or design. Um, but for my service guys, it's going to be a little bit less, but you should still be charging something. Any other questions, comments? I'm, I'm loving all this activity in the chat here, guys. Feel free to raise your hand or unmute. This is kind of a, a random question, and I don't know if it's too much of a personal question, but I'm my brother and I are looking to purchase a commercial property and I'm wondering how many of the contractors put um, emphasis on owning your own building or you would rather be a renter? Dale, if you want to comment on that too, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dale, I'm like picking on you today. <laughs> uh, he's somebody when he first started with us, he was just a chuck in a truck, just him, you know, owning his own company, working out of his house. And then I can't remember what year, Dale, I want to say it may have in 2020 when you purchased your warehouse um and uh, what well i if i have a client who asked me that laura i always just say we need to weigh all, all of our options let's see what is it going to cost me to buy what's my interest rate going to be you know what options are there out there versus renting um how much am i going to spend there what how much space is like i would just check out all of your options um and and make a make a decision from there but i would love to know if any of our clients have have had that experience or kind of ran that debate or done that research themselves well i think financing is a is a you know big challenge particularly as a small business there's just not a lot of options um outside of the sba so mm -hmm. um anyway we're looking the biggest yeah. thing laura i would say is we we 
grown. We started in 2018 and you got to, you got to look at your expansion and, and how you're going to grow and, and scale. So I don't know exactly what you, I think I heard hot tub, uh, but we went from just a regular office um, and then we had to grow a little bit more and we grew a little bit more and then we needed a yard to fence all our stuff. And so if you own, and Dave Ramsey talks about this too, if you own, you got to think about that. Like, okay, so we paid for this property. Now we have a 15, 30 year mortgage, however, whatever it is. And if in two years you guys grow, you sign a big contract or something, and now you need, now you're going to have to go rent somewhere else on top of what you own. Also, yes, it is an asset and eventually you'll have equity and all that. But just, I would think about that before you really settle down and plant roots and buying a building. That's my opinion. We have not bought a building. So maybe some of these guys have, and they're like, absolutely not buy now so that you're not, because you know, rent does go up, especially in California, I would imagine. So yeah. that's just my input. I think that is wisdom where it's like, don't, if you are going to buy, don't buy for how big you are now, but how big you will be. Cause right now, you know, buying something and selling it within a couple of years doesn't make a ton of sense, you know, back even five years ago, I think it made more sense to do that than it does now. Um, and so I would just really weigh all of your options. Dale just commented, said that they own their building. It just made more sense for them to spend, you know, the same dollar with the potential of the equity. Um, and he's making double payments. I'll tell you guys a quick brag on Dale. If I could get all of my clients to run their finances the way that Dale Eads does, I it, we would all be better off for it. He is a he is tight with that money and he keeps an eye on it. And just <laughs> I applaud, applaud you, Dale. You there. Um, but yeah, Laura, I would weigh out all of your options. I would get with a few different banks. I would look at a few different loans. You know, I would just really see all what big picture was it all going to look like and make the decision from there thank you yeah, the, the other thing laura um don't fall in love with the piece of property fall in love with the money it can make you you need to look at everything when you're buying a property including if you're in a service business travel routes to the areas that you frequent because that money in and out with trucks adds up in a hurry if you're traveling a long way to get to your work as because you fell in love with a piece of property no, that makes sense. You certainly want to be centrally located to, you know, your access freeways and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. I, I recommended to somebody that they buy a piece of property in the Chicago market uh, because I was helping them out with their business. And uh, I was driving the area in the suburbs and I ran across this really run down neighborhood, but it had four expressways crossing right there. And uh, they, they send... Uh, 50, 60 trucks out every day, big trucks, heavy equipment, that kind of thing. And uh, they didn't take my advice and buy the property. I told them, you really should buy this property. It's going to save you a ton of money on your on your deployment costs. And uh, they didn't. And guess who bought it? Amazon bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Any other questions here, guys? Uh, Dale just put, and this is kind of going back to a previous question. We do have about a third of callers not book the estimate, but we believe that we are eliminating the tire kickers full quality. You know, interested in doing work for um and part of that too laura i know that you guys just started with us but you're going to feel a lot more confident with weeding out people like not booking them because they don't want to do an estimate in person they don't want to pay that fee you're going to feel a lot more confident about that decision when you have a lot more leads coming in you know you're gonna you're gonna be like okay i don't feel the urge to try to quote somebody over the phone who's really pushing for it because i've got a lot of opportunity and that's really what dale is saying here um which he does have over 700 Google reviews in the Oklahoma City area. Quick, yeah. quick brag on him. <laughs> All good feedback, guys. What other questions do we have? I have so many questions, but I don't want to dominate the conversation. So, hey, we love to have it, Laura. What questions? So, I'm. Way? I'm curious about what others' experience are with hiring a CPA to do your 
your tax returns, whether you're, you know, corporation or however you're structured. We've had the same CPA probably going on 14, 15 years now, and she doesn't specialize in contractors. So I'm now that we're signed up with Redmond, I'm hoping Nicole or whoever is going to help us find a contract or I'm sorry, find a CPA that specializes in contractors or is it really necessary? So, um, I'll take a swig at this question. Hi, guys. Hey, Good to Robert. see everybody. Robert Redmond here. Uh, Laura, great question. So um, I I have never, first of all, off the top of my head, I don't know contractor-specific focus CPAs. So if, if someone has a recommendation, that'd be great. I do have, I do have a recommendation. And when you're looking for the CPA, you you really there, there's two types of CPAs that typically exist. Is you have one that a type of CPA that like is afraid of the IRS, and with that CPA, you're going to end up paying a lot more in taxes than you should. Um, and then you have CPAs who respect the IRS, but also uh, have a goal of not having to pay any more taxes than you should, right? So for example, if anyone is running all or most of their pay through a W-2 format for yourself, not for your employees, right? But if you are paying yourself through a W-2 format, and that's the majority of your pay, then, then you're already paying way too much money in taxes right now. Oh, um and and the reason why that is is because whenever you pay yourself through a w-2 format you have to pay a 15.1 percent payroll tax on top of that and what the irs requires is that um you know if you are an owner and operator in your business right which is going to be most of us then you do have to pay yourself a reasonable salary, right? But they don't define what reasonable really means. And so what reasonable typically means and, and what I typically recommend is to pay yourself, depending upon what kind of business you have, how large it is, where you're at, maybe a 40 to 50, maybe $60,000 a year salary through your W-2, and then you take the rest of the money you're not just making that a year and that's it but you let the rest of it flow down to your bottom line on your profits and you take a distribution from the business that you do not have to pay a 15 uh, percent payroll tax on and so that's like kind of the big typically move that you can do and then electing to register your business as a uh, s corp whenever you're going to file for taxes uh, is a real important part of that process as well. And, uh, and then like my CPA, like for we, I have a remodeling business in um, uh, Seattle, right? And we were really needing to buy a vehicle. And so I didn't know this, but he said, hey, if you buy a truck and we were really needing to buy a work truck, you know, anyway, it's like, if you buy a truck that's over 6,000 pounds, I see Ryan Perrin shaking his head. I, I, it sounds like he's done this before, right? If you buy a truck that's over 6,000 pounds, you can write, I think, nearly the entire thing off. I think we wrote off 80% of it, of, of, of the truck. But it's like, if you don't have a CPA telling you those kinds of things, then, then like actually helping you save money and keep most of what you're earning, then in my opinion, you got to find a new CPA. And so, Laura, I have one that I that I use. He's a very close friend of mine. He does my taxes, and then he does all the taxes. Um, yeah, Arnold's Plumbing just just kind of confirmed what 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 I was just saying here. Uh, he files my taxes as well as the taxes for my remodeling company, and so he knows like the expenses of contractors and things like that and how to prepare uh, uh, for taxes and set up quarterlies or anything you might need help with. Are you needing help with 2023's taxes still, Laura? 
Well, we're we're on a fiscal year, so my fiscal year ends June thirtieth. So the tax return is going to be due September, and I've just used the same gal, uh, you know, creature of habit, and I, you know, feeling intuitively like maybe there's a better option for us. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, let me connect you with my CPA, and you can talk to him sometime before you know the next week or so. And I would just you know, without even really making a commitment, I get nothing from referring you to him other than just trying to help you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you could just have him take a look at, at what you're doing. Um, he really specializes in this process that I was, I was telling you about before. In fact, the name of his company is, is accounting and tax company is called S corp biz. Right. So he specializes in this filing for S corp process. And so, uh, and then he's a person that, that I know very well. And uh, he's, he's, he's really, he's unlike most CPAs. He's like actually a good guy to get along with. So I'm going to reach out to him and either uh, get a scheduling link from him, Laura, or I'll create like a text thread between me, you and him. And then you guys can just sync up and set up a time. That would be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions about that? Is if anyone else heard that process and it's like, what was he saying about saving money? And just making sure that the main thing is this: is is if you're paying yourself primarily through, you do need to have, especially after you've been in business for at least a couple of years, you do need to pay yourself through a W two. Um, but if you're paying all of yourself through a W-2, then um, uh, that you're paying way more in taxes than you have to. You're paying thousands of dollars of more in taxes than, than you have to. And, and what I mean by that is it's not some scheme. It's that literally you don't have to pay that money and you are, right? And the government isn't in a hurry to give that money back to you. <laughs> I got a quick question on that. How... How often would you say we should be in touch with our CPAs? Uh, and I'm sure that changes as you grow, but. At least once a quarter. Just because of quarterly tax payments. And so that's that's why I like this other guy um, that I'm talking about. His name is Shane Williamson. Um, again, he's a super smart guy, CPA. I went to uh, uh, college with him. He graduated top of like the accounting class. And he's also a software engineer too, but he's also like a business person, you know, like he's not just some recluse, but I would recommend at least touching base with him quarterly. And the thing that is frustrating to me about most CPAs, because I've worked with a handful of CPAs, is it seems like rather than being proactive about helping me, it was like, they really didn't want to talk to me, it seemed like they really... They didn't, they didn't, like, that's a great question. You know, how, how often should you be, but like, that's a question your CPA should be answering for you. You know what I mean? And so again, I'm not here to, to, to tell everybody to get a new CPA. If, if you're feeling confident in your CPA and, and you feel like they're doing a good job, great. If you're hearing some of the stuff and you're saying, this doesn't sound really familiar to me, then it, that, that it might just be worth having someone else maybe look at you know, your 2023, uh, 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 you know, tax filing and just see if they, you know, can find any sort of low hanging fruit there with a quick glance at it. Josh, I yeah. see your hands up. Do you have a question, comment? Yeah, I, I have a comment. Um, I'm actually a former CPA with a little bit of a disdain for the whole public accounting profession. And, uh, that's awesome. Dude, you, you, you've been like sitting here being like, I'm going to let Robert say all he's going to say, and then I'm going to own his ass in front of everybody. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not, not at all. Everything you yeah. said kind of, kind of rings true with what I was thinking. Okay. Um, the one thing, the one thing that I'd like to emphasize is, is what you said about finding a CPA that, that isn't scared of the IRS. You want to find a CPA that's, that's aggressive, but not creative. 
so they want to they want to go by case law. They want to go by things that they've have experience with. You don't want a CPA that starts well. We could do this maybe, you know. But you do want a, a little bit of an aggressive CPA. Um, a lot of CPAs are worried about you know CYA and not necessarily your bottom line. Right. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. And and somebody asked, um, you know, what what time of year or how often should I be in contact with my CPA? I would say, I mean, it would it would depend, but um, any sort of big acquisitions, you definitely want to talk to you know your tax advisor beforehand. And uh, the other thing, it really varies by state. I I'm in New York State, and I'm a lot more afraid of New York State than I am of the IRS. And some states are are real nasty, and uh, New York State's one of them. So it also depends on the state, kind of how often you talk to your CPA and the kind of CPA that, that you want. And um, as far as a, a contractor specific CPA, I don't really see the benefit in that unless it's a real niche business and you're doing a lot of complicated transactions. Um, there might be big tax consequences. Um, I don't really see the advantage of, of seeking out a contractor specific CPA if that if that helps anybody out yeah yeah and and josh would you say that's why why you say that because because um that's what i was thinking at the beginning of the call like hey i don't know any contractor specific cpas i don't know if it makes a big difference but would you say it's because whether or not you're a contractor or any other business the way that the categorization of transactions and the filing of a taxes for a business depending upon how you're registered, isn't going to change a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The processes are the same, even for audits, um, for taxes. It really is the same, unless there's some like very unique aspect of your business where there's different different laws and different requirements in the IRS or, you know, for, for auditing, um, which you don't see that often in, in, in a, a contractor's business. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate that, that, Josh. Really How long were you a CPA for? Well, um, I was in public accounting for I th like like six years. Um, were you in like big I, four? Oh no, 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 I was a big. It was a top ten CPA firm in uh, in Manhattan. I was doing financial services, then I moved oh, to the other God. side of the state to Buffalo and was doing more like business stuff. But. Um, I, I, I used the, my bonus when I became a CPA, when I passed all my exams to start my business that I'm in right now. So I don't think there's anybody else in the history of public accounting that went through that hell of uh, getting, getting certified and then quitting public accounting like that, that day. But that's, uh, that's, that's how I did it. <laughs> yeah. Most, most of the uh, CPAs I know, like give it, a good two, three years in public accounting before they're burnt out. Um, yeah, it's rough. So, yeah, which you know what CPA stands for, right? <laughs> I know a couple of different uh, things it stands for. Certified pain in the abdomen. Uh, yeah. It really hurts <laughs> right in the abdomen right there. What'd you guys think yeah. I was going to say? That's a joke my dad says. My dad was a CPA at PwC and started the tax and accounting software company. That's kind of our part of our history. Um, but but he tells that one way too much. And now I'm telling the dad jokes. So <laughs> any other questions yeah. here with the last few minutes? Uh, we've got some good feedback. You know, Arnold's Plumbing, he mentioned that he takes quarterly uh, distributions based on profits. That's, that's really a profit first concept. We think that's a great way to do things. Um, you know, uh, the way that we do it in, in my remodeling business is whatever's in the profit account at the end of the month, we leave 50% there. And then we split 50% of, of what's left as well as split up some uh, owner's distribution account, the uh, owner's comp account pretty fairly too. So Chris Anderson mentioned uh, that they have a construction specific CPA, but they're more tailored to Atlanta. Um, you know, if you can find it, it's amazing. I think that's that's really good insight. Any other questions here, Josh? Really appreciate your insight and uh, sharing the wealth, buddy. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I really liked what he said, you know, to, to kind of uh, take that a step further than someone who's either, you know, afraid of the IRS or, or isn't afraid of the IRS. Step further is, you know, I, I think you said someone who isn't afraid of the IRS, but also isn't creative. Or how did you word that? Yeah, uh, aggressive to a certain point, but not right. creative. Aggressive, but not creative. That's really, really good. I really like that. Thanks. And are you saying because the creative CPA types with, with, with you know, creating these new like funds and, and creating these new shell companies and whatever that they may do, that's like typically a scheme versus an aggressive CPA who knows tax law and isn't afraid to, to, to be a little bit liberal and pushing some of the areas of interpretation in tax law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you don't want the CPA that's like, you know, let's let's try this. Let's, you know, they don't have any sort of uh, uh, tax law case law to, to really uh, yeah. go off of, you know. But you do want the the CPA that's gonna try the things that 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 he's seen work in the past, or you can kind of, um, you know, it's a uh, you know an aggressive position without getting too weird with it <laughs> right yeah there's some pretty funky complex tax strategies out there <laughs> um so anyway uh are we about wrapped up nicole or yeah no guys thank you so much for coming to this call with questions we love that again this is the most powerful hour of the week because you not only have all the coaches here but you have other clients who have either been where you are at or you know have gone through it already or are where you're at. So just come to these meetings with wins, come to them with questions. If you have any questions about anything we discussed today, please reach out to your coach. It is what we are here for. We'll have group coaching same time next week, but we're gonna close out this call the same way we close every call, which is gonna be with a th big three, two, one growth. So if I could get everybody to unmute for me, I know it's annoying, making you feel like you're back in high school, living the glory days. Oh, Josh Eldridge is on this call. Hey, Josh, good to see you here. Okay, sorry to interrupt, Nicole. <laughs> You're all right. So we're going to do a three, two, one. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Cool, we got to work on that countdown. I think we caught us all by surprise here. Sorry. All right, guys, we'll see you.